Good morning and welcome to the Charles Ian Persico Show brought to you by White Apple Bush live on Facebook and also YTV. My name's Anton Persico. I'm joined here by uh, Mark Childs. And look, we're pretty excited today, Charles, because we've got some pretty epic guests on the show. Well, yeah, I suppose it's our, our crowning glory moment here this yep. week, uh, Pesco. What in, everybody? Yes. Well, let's get straight into it. Yep. Uh, we're not talking about rugby yet. We're going to talk about cricket. And welcome to the show, fresh from hitting the winning runs in the World Test Championship final, our very own Ross Taylor. What in, Ross? Morning. Morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, hey, thanks for your time, Ross, this morning. Uh, uh, well, firstly, mate, just uh, we'll hook straight into it. Uh, how's isolating been? What have you been up to? Yeah, I think I've done Netflix to death. Um, our yard time is uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and, and 5, so you've got to make the most of getting a bit of fresh air. But um, I think I've been pretty lucky with uh, the Euros and, and the M NBA basketball being on, being able to, uh, to watch a bit of that and uh, obviously the chase at 5 o'clock. Cool, mate. Yeah, well, look, obviously um, we're pretty proud of, of you and where you come from which is the Wadded Upper. Just tell us a little bit about um, your name, Ross, and your lineage and your family for the viewers at home. Yeah, um, to this day, it's still Rip's dad. Um, Dad's born and bred Masterton, but I, mum was over the hill in, in Lower Hutt, and I was born in Lower Hutt, where all my sisters were born in Masterton. Um, but no, I grew up in Masterton. Uh, my name, Luteru Ross Patel Lotte Taylor, obviously um, being Samoan. Um, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed growing up in, in a small town and um, being supported by a lot of people. Uh, Mum and Dad obviously still live in the bush now. Uh, but no, when I get the chance to, to go down and um, obviously see them and, and see the see the sights that I used to um, enjoy, Kurupuni Bakery and 10 o'clock cookie time and all that type of stuff, uh, still um, still enjoyable to this day. Cool, mate. And your, your memories of growing up here with school and whatnot, and in your earlier years, obviously cricket has been a big part of your life, but you were a hockey player as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I guess Warrapa having a, a strong hockey connection. Um, our principal at the time was a was a hockey was a hockey man, and um, my my mum. I was quite a small kid, so mum didn't want me to to play rugby. So it was easy to um, to play cricket in the summer and, and hockey for the hand eye coordination. Um, flew a few trips to. To Clearville over the years and um, and whatnot, and, and representing Wairapa, um, we made the we always used to make the semi final of age group tournaments, but we couldn't quite uh, get past that. But for a smaller Wairapa with uh, the numbers we had, I thought it was a pretty good effort. Did you have a hatch cup at all back then? Hatch cup was in Wellington, um, so it was cool to have family and friends come over the hill. Um, I think we came seventh or eighth that year, but um, no, I still have. Fond memories um, of that, um, you know, the workmans, all the all the famous hockey names uh, around the around the traps, um, you know, to play with them and get coached by them as well. Awesome, and you're yeah, speaking of, of people like the workmans. Who were the influential people in your childhood growing up here? With your perhaps from a sporting sense, um, I know your, your parents have been hugely influential in your family. But any other individuals you can think of that had a real effect on you? Uh, yeah, I used to. Um, my dad used to play for Lansdowne. Um, there was obviously a lot of coaches, um, Butch, Mark Brown, uh, a lot of people. Uh, Craig McBride, the, the late Craig McBride, was one of my first rep coaches. Um, you know, they had big influences on me. Uh, Wayne Newington, uh, Doug Bracewell, you know, a lot of names that you would know. Um, and they've all played their part. Um, and apologies, I probably missed the, a lot of names in there, but, um, you know, the. The wisdom, the coaching, um, and just the time that they've given given me and, and a lot of others uh, is much appreciated. And I guess that's that's the nice thing about winning the World Cup. That um, uh, it's obviously nice for yourself, but um, it's it's also a big thank you to those people who have helped you out along the way. Yeah, hey Roscoe, cheers for that. Every week on the show, we give away uh, an award for what we call the Lone Star Legend. And it's a hundred dollars to spend down at the Lone Star, and we've given it, given it away to some incredible people this year. We want you to give it away to one person who resides in the Wadded Upper, uh, who you feel should deserve uh, a steak and maybe a beer at the Lone Star over the next week, mate. So make your selection. Oh, that's a that's a tough one. Um, I think he's been a bit of a legend. I don't know if he's already won this, um, but I'll say Doug Bracewell. Doug Bracewell Senior. Thank you, Bracewell. Right. Thank you, Bracewell. Well done, Dougie. Yep. Absolute legend of a man and, and done so much for sport in the Wadarapa, especially with uh, teenagers. So 
Thank you, Bracewell Senior. You are the Lone Star Legend of the Week. Thanks very much, Ross. Um, now, just a few more questions for you, Ross. Uh, we, we see that Michael Mason's going on tour, the mace that, that the team picked up for winning the final. Uh, for, for those who don't know, Michael Mason uh, was a New Zealand cricketer, played for the Stags, uh, grew up in Greytown, and he played cricket for the great, mighty Greytown Thirds back in the day. So that mace, Ross, that's going on tour. Can you tell us a little bit about that tour? And um, unfortunately, I, I hear it's not coming to the bush. But tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, uh, geez, I think it's the 26th or 27th that's going on, um, starting in Whangarei, going through Auckland, um, Hamilton, Taranaki, Palmerston North, uh, and Wellington, and then on to the South Island. So unfortunately, um, it, it misses the, the bush, but um, you know we've been assured that uh, players will be able to get the, um, the mace and be able to take it to their to, to their areas. So um, yeah, I think it will be appropriate to um, to bring it to the bush when I when I get my opportunity. So um, yeah, the Mike Mason um, is residing in BJ Watling's room at the moment, but uh, don't worry, um, I'll, I'll bring it down at some stage. At this stage, I don't know when it will be, but I'll uh, I'll be bringing it down at some stage. All right, cool, Roscoe. Um, look, I want to get a little, little bit serious with you here. I want to talk about uh, probably the turning point in your cricket career. Now, this was um, 1999, I believe, uh, Wycole versus Marist Old Boys. Um, I was charging in, Roscoe, and this is probably the greatest ball you've ever faced, so you can correct, the, correct me afterwards. Now, I was charging in off a 30-pacer. I right, come steaming in, high hands. This thing swung in, hit the seam, went out. I got you prodding. All right, David Marinovich was at third slip, took it one-handed, and we gave you probably the biggest send-off we've given anyone. Can you just uh, talk us through that and also tell us, have you faced a ball like this ever ever again in your life? Um, I think it was 1997 and I was 13. Um, <laughs> and I think, I think you're, make, you're making it up because I don't know if you've ever bowled with three slips. Um, so, <laughs> um, but yeah. You know, I mean, if you want to claim getting a 13-year-old out, then no, I've, that's fine by me. Um, but uh, to this day, I've never really, I've always really struggled against bowlers who bowled between 113 and 117 kilometres an hour. So, um, yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, apologies. <laughs> All right, we, we deep down, Roscoe, we know the truth, all right? But, but the, the speed was probably a little slower than that. You gave me a little bit extra on the <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, it was there, at but... least 125. It was at least one. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Roscoe. Yeah, enough about you, Persico. <laughs> um, now, your signature, Pukana, every 100 you get. You've got 40 international 100s, Ross. When did you, did you start doing that with your very first ton? I can't quite recall. Just talk us through uh, the meaning of that uh, and, and why you do it. Yeah, I did it my second my second 100. and. It was when I was growing up, I used to, if I got a hundred and I got dropped a couple of times, I, I would call it a tiki hundred and sort of, it was more of a, um, yeah, it was just, it wasn't as good as it, it probably should have been. Um, and then I, I got it against uh, Australia and just, yeah, poked my tongue out and then they, sh I don't know, it might have been 2012 or 13 or something around there, my, um, probably even a bit later than that, my daughter watched an old game. And she said, "Oh, Dad, if you get a hundred, that that Australian game, if you get a hundred, can you poke my tongue, your tongue out?" So that that next match, I you know, was fortunate enough to get a hundred uh, and poke my tongue out, and she reminds me uh, about it a lot. So um, yeah, it's to her and, and the kids, but um, yeah, it's just a, a, a nice little reminder and probably my signature that um, some people uh, some people like and some people tell me to put it away. Oh, we think it's great, mate. Um, look. What, what we were talking about um, before was um, a little bit about your technique. So for people who are into cricket, and this is primarily a rugby show, but we'll get a little bit technical here. We've noticed maybe in latter years, or well, you had the eye surgery, for one. Tell us a little bit about how that's helped you. And two, you probably opened up your front foot a little bit more. And just tell us a little bit about your technique now as you set up to face the bats, to face the bowler. Yeah, I think it's like anything. Um, your game evolves. Uh, the the eye surgery in 2016 definitely um, definitely helped, and I was able to to see the ball clearly um, after the operation. Um, I had throws probably about two weeks later, and it was the first time I could see the ball swing from the hand for for I suppose I didn't really know how long because it was such a gradual thing. Um, but no, the the foot um, thing I don't actually know how how it came about. It just I guess you hit so many balls and you get into different positions. Um, 
you know, some habits are good and, and some habits are bad. So um, even at the age of 37, I'm still trying to improve my game and, uh, and work on little things, and, um, and that's one of them as well. Great thing about sports, you, you can always learn, doesn't matter how old you are, and does that help you clear the front pad a bit more with, with opening up that foot, Ross? Yeah, I mean, you're trying to, um, you're trying to obviously get that front foot out of the way because of my pre-delivery movement, um, but then at the same time, you don't want to have your head, my head's always fallen over um, right from when, when Percy used to get me out for fun. Um, but, you know, it's, it's that nerves early on in the innings, um, you, you're just falling over a little bit. I've always done it. It's just um, you know trying to minimise it as much as possible and giving yourself the best chance. Yeah, I, I did notice that when I did get your Roscoe. Anyway, um, Chaudzi, <laughs> are we going to introduce uh, our next guest to the show? And we're going to come back to you, Roscoe, because this is really good chat. Well, yeah, Over we are. You. We are. This is this is um, what it up is probably second favourite cricket yep. son uh, at the moment. And uh, look, he's sitting at home there in Greytown. Uh, he's all <laughs> kitted up. He's dressed up for the occasion. Morning, Sir France. Hey guys, morning, how are you? And uh, good to see you too, Ross, and congratulations and welcome home. Uh, thanks, thanks, Ranta. It's good to see you in the CD kit with, um, <coughs> have you got sunscreen on that forehead? No, I don't <laughs> yet. I actually had my, uh, my Black Cats test top on, but uh, <coughs> unfortunately I haven't been picked yet, so I thought I'd take that off and put the stags <laughs> on. Yeah, well, Seth, there's always a chance for you, mate. Keep trucking in. Now, Ross, we've got a question for you about Seth. Look, he's a bit of a pest, isn't he, around the team? Let's face it. Is he the biggest pest in world cricket and why? Um, no, definitely not. Uh, Tim Southey, my, he's just at the back here. He is a, a lot bigger pest. Um, I think, you know, over the years, Seth has come out of his shell. Um, but no, I think in the team, you know, he's a, he's a leader, he's a senior player and obviously um, a fast bowler. But to, to this day... Um, the boys can't really work out why why Seth has fallen in love and his first love um, his job as a as a hairdresser. So um, <laughs> Seth being with, having a lot of having a lot of hair, um, and, um, falling in love with a hairdresser still to this day <laughs> I, I can't understand. <laughs> well, look, he's a he's a community man and he's a, a proud Greydown man, <laughs> Seth France. So Seth, the question for you, you've obviously lacking in the hair department, uh, quite clearly. Uh, but you've made it to the Black Caps from Greytown, whereas a lot of people you know, generally move away to further their sporting careers from the bush. Tell us a little bit about what, why you did that and how you actually got to the top. Uh, yeah, that's something I get asked a lot, actually, is um, how I've gone about it from Greytown, and it's something I'm pretty proud to have said that I've played New Zealand and achieved that from playing from Greytown and the Wairapa. Um, and there's always been a lot of pressure to move elsewhere and, and try and be closer to the coaches and the management but I've stuck to my guns and there's been a lot of fire in the belly to, to be able to do it from here and uh, you need to be quite well disciplined in what you do and make sure you're putting in the hard work and um, yeah I've been lucky enough to, to have done that and stuck to it and proud to say that I play cricket as a job. Yeah we're really proud of you Seth and uh, I think Central Districts Cricket need a pat on the back too. They've They've really opened up the opportunities for people in the smaller regions or players now, um, under 17s, under 19s, etc. Um, so cats off to the stags for really what they've done probably over the last 10 years. Yeah. Because it was difficult prior to that um, to make it from here. So, yeah, look, a um, few more questions. Now, Ross Taylor, we've got a quick 10 for you. Now, oh, the quick fire 10. The quick fire 10. Now, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you two options and you've got to pick one. All right? So you can't sit on the fence, on the fence Ross. Are you ready? Let's give it a go. Righto. So you're a fan of KFC, we all know that. So the first question, original recipe or Wicked Wings? Oh, original. Easy. The White Swan or the Lone Star? I have to say the Lone Star because I've never been to the White Swan. <laughs> now, Central Otago Pinot Noir or Martinborough Pinot Noir? No brainer, Martinborough. Tavita Isaac or Peter Beach? Tavita. Absolutely, yes. Sorry, BG. Uh, Rennie or Foster? There, Ross. <laughs> um, oh, that's a... Foster goes to the same cafe in Hamilton. Easy. 
Yeah, we, we asked that of Graham. Graham, yeah, Graham, Henry, Graham, Graham Henry. We ended up on ABC <laughs> News when we asked Graham Henry that question. <laughs> Next one, Joel, uh, Rich, Richie Mwanga or Bowden Barrett? Ooh. That's a toughie too. Oh, Bowden. Good CD Bode. boy. CD boy, go the Canes. T20s or 50 overs, Ross? 50 overs. Preference. 50 overs, yep, averaging 48. Uh, Greytown or Pioneer playing today? Um, I'm still I'm still undecided if um, Greytown have forgiven you for going to Carterton. So, um, ah, yeah. You know, Roscoe, that was his midlife crisis too when Charlesy went and played for Carterton for a year. So you did right. Yes. You're the only person, the other person that remembers it. Pioneer yeah, or so Greytown? I, well, Pioneer, Pioneer um, share the club rooms at Lansdowne, I think, still. But um, Mr Pottinger and yourself at Greytown will go with Greytown. Oh, hey, buddy. Now this is uh, this is the Brown Cup. Sorry, the Grant Cup. Uh, played four between those uh, two clubs, well, Carterton and Greytown. So currently holding it. But yes, I did have a midlife crisis. Uh, thanks for bringing that up again, Pesco. Uh, look, Dougie or Jensen, did you win it that year? You went to Carterton. Pardon, Ross. Did you did you win it that year? You went to Carterton. No, we got smoked in the final. No, I think uh, Marston Stars, Marston Stars were really strong that year. I think they're unbeaten. They won forty-three-three. Yeah, 43, yeah. I, if I, my yeah. memory serves me correctly, but, no, uh, I, I got, but me and um, Joe, Joe we did from the captain that year. Um, of yeah, great talent, he still holds a grudge. Ah, uh, yeah, is that a Fenwick? Uh, no comment. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right, couple more questions. All right, yep. Uh, Dougie or Jesse? Oh. Jeeves. Oh. Um, Jesse. <laughs> Cut shot or slog sweep? Oh. Uh, Cut shot. Jeez, you've scored a pile of runs with that the last 10 years. Super rugby or NPC? Uh, NPC. Yep, good on you, mate. Good, cool. And the last one, the alternate cricket commentary or the crowd goes wild? Um, well, uh, McConey's on both, so I'll say ACC. ACC. Well done, mate. Yeah, look, uh, that's about it all from me, mate. Um, once again, extremely proud of, of where your roots are and for sharing us uh, some thoughts on your, your childhood, Ross. Uh, Seth? Just back to you now. If I could, just on Roscoe, mate, we are super proud of you, and everyone in the Wild Upper absolutely loves it. But I have been asked by about five different people to ask one question on the show, and so we've got to ask it. What did it feel like to hit the winning runs uh, in the World Test Series? Um, yeah, no, I mean, it was probably still hasn't sunk in, but um, Kane was... I'd left the ball before and Kane sort of gave me that look to hurry up and finish it that he didn't want to finish it. So um, that that sort of gave me the, the chance. I was just going to hit that ball regardless. It just was a little bit fuller than I expected and everyone made out that um, I'd flick that off. I was going to slog it regardless. So it was nice to nice to hit it and um, and celebrate with Kane who, you know, we've had a lot of ups and downs, but um, it was nice to, to finally get across the line after 2019 um, and losing on boundary count. Yeah, certainly went off the middle of the bat there, Ross. Uh, Seth, uh, get back. Let's head back to you now. Uh, your training program through winter, how's it been going? What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, it's just starting to kick off now. So I'm back bowling out there at Rathkeel at the Nets. Uh, we've got a fantastic facility there. Uh, playing for the mighty skulls to try and keep fit. And yeah, trying to start hitting the gym and, and build up a good base of fitness and getting the load under the belt to get ready into it first of September. There's a big game of football on today. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the massive game uh, this afternoon, half past two at the Greytown Memorial Park. A bit of a hard one for me playing against the old foes, but the mighty skulls, we top of the table unbeaten playing the Greytown. It's always a bit of a grudge game. So I'm picking us 4-0. Uh, yeah, well, the mighty skulls <laughs> is a football, by the way, folks, for, you, for those who don't know. And uh, look, Seth, out there as striker um, with the dome, and look, the odd ball does slip off his head sometimes, <laughs> uh, I've seen, uh, but it's always entertaining. He wants to get a rag just to wipe the sweat off so it doesn't slide off it. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's not so good in the air. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Now, guys, uh, believe it or not, we actually have rugby today. We do. Um, I feel like going out there and getting in the nets with uh, Roscoe again, but um, we've got games, and it's the uh, Senior Reserves Finals, uh, which start kicking off. Charles, did you want to cover this? Yeah, Marston Red Star quarterfinal, number one against Marston and Maris. Well, we know what last time these two well, teams Well, Rumble played. and Colombo, this <laughs> game, jeez. <laughs> the game got called offlets, so they're playing each other again two weeks later, so... Uh, All right, now we, to, we do want to talk about this, the What About You campaign. It's about looking after your mates. Boys, this is a, um, a, a, playoff, a playoff final. Yep. We don't need to see the same stuff as what we saw a couple of weeks back, do no, we? No, I'm sure gonna, their behaviour will be uh, much improved there. Yep. So have a great game, lads. And then uh, the Greytown Papawai Prowlers, they're on the bus out to Pukatoi there yep. for quarterfinal number two. I think that'll be a very close match. Yep. Uh, the, Prowler, the Prowlers uh, prime themselves up for this game. They train well Thursday. So I'm actually picking them to Is an Brady Bingham playing again? Uh, no, he's not. He, he's not, he's either, not okay. playing this week, no. All right, no. so he's just managing the bus trip. <laughs> he will be, yeah. All right, and then in the bottom four of the table, they play off. So Leith Harley's uh, Marnaborough side are up against Gladstone. Uh, and also East Coast, uh, they host Pioneer as well. Um, let's hope Pioneer show up for this because they have defaulted the last two games. So let's hope they get some numbers there for the last, uh, hopefully the last game of the round. Or so, the last yeah, game. we're taking... Uh, Probably glad he's won that one in East Coast to be Pioneer yep. for that. And it's a fantastic competition. Get out there and support those teams. Okay, the uh, Moose Carpenter Cup uh, Premiership Division. We're in the final round. And, guys, anything can happen here. There's so many teams based on winners this weekend that can make through to the semifinals. Greytown, however, have secured themselves a final spot. Um, the big game for me, Maris, they host Carterton. Now, um, the winner of this game will guarantee to get a semifinal spot, right, Charles? Yes, correct. Yeah, right. going, who, who uh, you got on this one? I'm picking Carterton to win that one. Maris will come out firing, but Carterton are on the improve, yep. in my opinion, so I'll be taking them. Uh, taking Ro the Roscoe, improve. what do you think on this one? Maris, uh, Carterton, who you got? Uh, Marist. Yeah, good man. Um, good man. I think Charles is only going for them because he used to play for them. So I'll Yeah, exactly. Marist. Exactly. All right, Seth, what do you get? What do you got on this game? Yeah, definitely Marist. The, they used to finals footy. They'll win by yeah. 20. Yep. God, you guys are good. Don't remind me of that, Rance. Bloody hell. All right. Um, Pioneer hosts Greytown at, uh, is it Jean Street? Jean Street, Jean Street, Old Timers Day. Yeah, massive crowd down there. Big test for Greytown this game. Okay. So, yeah, I'm expecting a, a massive performance from Pioneer. Charles, are you guaranteed to final spot? Let, let us everyone, let everyone know. Are you resting players today to make it through the semi finals uh, or are you. No, ab hard? absolutely not. We're not resting anyone other than injuries. Okay. So, Tavita Isaac is actually out. Yep. Uh, this week and groin injury, I believe, possibly next week as well yep. for the semi final. So okay. that's a massive blow. He's our spiritual leader, our captain. He's the mayor of Greytown, and he's so, and he's also leading um, the player of the year. Yeah, he is leading well. player of the year at times. Eight. So massive blow for Greytown, um, but hopefully we can come away with a, a good performance and, and win. Pioneer came into the season as the underdogs. If they do upset Greytown here, they make it through to they the do. finals. Yes, they do. So um, it's been massive there. for that club as well. And Old Timers Day, it's going to be massive at Gene Street today. So get down there and support Pioneer. Gladstone versus Ekaterina again. The winner of this can get through. That's right. Another pretty much quarter final. Uh, that's an old-timers day there as well. So um, it's going to be some great games of rugby. This will be a tight match. Uh, yeah, Seth, what do you reckon? Gladdy or Eka Tahuna? Uh, Eka Tahuna. Eka Tahuna with Chuck Anderson at the helm. Yep, yeah, good uh, call. And Gladstone do have a few injuries at the moment too. Yeah, Struggling to up, finish the season off. Picked up a few last week, but they'll, they'll be super competitive. They were impressive yep. against Greydown last week. Roscoe, Gladstone, Eki, what do you reckon? Yeah, definitely Eka Tahuna. Uh, all the way. Oh, mate. All the way. Yeah, the baby chook. All right. And also East Coast, uh, they host Martinborough. Martinborough playing for a bit of pride. East Coast playing for semi final spot. So I reckon Brucey's side, I've been, I've been up, up them all year. Yeah. I reckon Brucey's side's going to fire up just for this last game. Yeah, agree. And um, there's going to be a few tears out there at Foriyama. Well, it's actually at Martinborough, isn't it? No, home game East Coast by the looks of it. Oh, it's Martinborough. It? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it is. You're wrong. Yeah. So it's at Martinborough. I'm, taking, I'm picking it up here. Are you picking uh, up? I've played well the last two weeks and it's their last game, so they'll, they'll give it a crack. Okay, now we've got the pick the score competition is $1,500 this week. Yeah, so. What game are we going? Are we going to get Lo Roscoe pick the game? Yeah, Roscoe, you, you go back. Go back. Go okay, back. Roscoe, you pick any one of these games um, and we do a little contest in the comments below. If you put the exact score of the winning team, you win $1,500. Um, you can pick the match of the round this week. I think it was the first game we talked about. Pioneer, Pioneer Greytown, I think. Let's, let's see, see how that goes.
All right. Shot Roscoe. Point here, great chat. And Roscoe, um, you get to pick the first score so no one else can have this. And um, and obviously your $1,500 is going to get donated to any charity of your choice. So you pick the score here. Who's going to win and what score do you think? Can you, uh, can you tell me uh, what the weather's going to be like? Uh, just a bit of inside info would be great. Yeah, the track uh, pitch is dry and it's, it's hot and fast. Pitch is dry and Greytown are <laughs> going in as $1.01 favourites. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to say 23.15 to Greytown. The G, right, eh? Right. Seth, you get cracked too. What do you uh, got? Greytown comfortably 68 points to 18. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds nice, like uh, Charlesy, Charlesy, get to beat her down there with Doug Whitcomb for a session. You'll be back for the semi final. Yeah, the old Gornis <laughs> Maximus is playing out. He's, uh, well, so he's saying. But uh, yeah, look, big loss for Great Down. What about you, campaign? It's all about looking after your mates, watching what you drink. Yep. Don't go overboard and organise a ride home. Don't drink and drive. Drink zero, be a hero, guys. Hey, thank you for being on the show, Roscoe. Awesome, Seth. So cool to have you both here on the show. Uh, thank you very much, and um, good luck with the future. Roscoe, just, just let's elaborate on this. Are you retiring, or are you going to keep playing for another couple of seasons? Um, no, I'm going to play. I've got to play this summer. Uh, I enjoy playing with Ranser, so I need to have a, one last hurrah with, with Ranser. Yeah. And, and as... As when we have photos together, everyone thinks that he's older than I am anyway. So, um, yeah, I've still got a few le years left in me. <laughs> Thanks, Roscoe. Yeah, um, right of reply there, Seth. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Hey, I'll guys, thanks for watching the show. Thanks for being on it. We're going to leave you now. Sorry, Seth. We're going to leave you now with um, five minutes of Roscoe just tearing apart um, bowling attacks from all over the world. Yeah, Ross Taylor's best sixes. Enjoy. Cool. See thanks you for watching. Taylor gives himself room and swats another one right up and towards the same spot. Two sixes in the air. And that is uh, what he's been searching for for quite some time. He shuffles across and there he goes. Couldn't wait any longer and it doesn't matter because he's got it perfect. It's gone. Oh, Michael Hussey. Six. Big. Well, that's gone a long, long way. Yeah, a bit like that. A bit of frustration. Well, there's that leg side. Maybe that shoulder's not quite as bad as I thought. If it's Ross Taylor reverting to tight, that is where he scores heavily across the shorter. What about this one? Well, that has cleared the roof. Yep, right up and on top of the roof. So back to back from Ross Taylor. In that way. Oh, Taylor goes again. He's thrown the switch. Massive six. Swung that, hit it really hard, hit it well. And it's gone all the way, that's a really big six. All out to the Pam Tyson netball area. Middle. There he goes again. Two sixes off the first two deliveries. It's a full toss. And it's gone. It's a high full toss, he didn't end the over properly. in the slot, Ross Taylor has... Oh, Taylor goes over, extra cover this time, and it is six more. Well, that's all right, it's leg side. It's drifting down.